Well, greetings and welcome to our devotion time. It's great to be with you today. We've been looking at Abram and Sarah, and we talked last about Abram's incredible encounter with God, this face-to-face -face encounter and a promise of a seed. And this promise of a, a son for Abram and the ultimate ownership of the land of Canaan, albeit four generations later as God reveals, has been established and, um, and, and they started that covenant ceremony. If you remember, we talked about the hoopah, the, the covering, kind of like a, a tent-like meeting place. But the Lord adjourns the, the ceremony abruptly uh, without really responding to Abram's request for a down payment on the promised seed in, in the form of a son of his own flesh. Abram didn't know that the, the ceremony was only act one in a, a two-act play, and, and it begins in chapter 17 being the second act. Abram didn't know that the, the time period represented by chapter 16 was just a, an intermission between the, the two acts of uh, 15 and, and 17. And when Abram returned to the camp and told Sarah what had happened and described for her the, the vision the, the Lord had, had shown him of the 400 years and four generations of, uh, of, of the seed, Sarah was apparently not overly impressed. All that stuff about the seed was fine for Abram, but what about her? She was not a, a spring chicken anymore. Uh, Sarah had waited for a baby to embrace all her life, but her biological clock had ticked its last tick quite some time back, and she felt she was running out of options, not to mention time. Family planning uh, was what was on Sarah's mind in, in chapter 16, that was, and it was Sarah's way, as we'll discover here. The years of, of waiting and expectation had apparently taken their toll on uh, this aging couple, and Sarah had begun to doubt herself. Abram had all, uh, after all, had, uh, had um, kept having God encounters and getting divine promises of, of descendants, but she wasn't getting those. And so maybe, and so this is speculation, maybe she thought to herself she was, she was the problem. She was most likely, uh, began to, to ponder, uh, if not even obsess, uh, on her, her lifelong barrenness and uh, what she needed, uh, she said she, she apparently decided was uh, family planning. And so one day as her Egyptian handmaiden, uh, a woman we know as Hagar, was ministering to her, a uh, thought came to, into her mind. Here's how that fateful thought is, is introduced by, by scriptures here. And so it says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bore him no children. She had a handmaid, a Mitzrayim, that's uh, in, in uh, Hebrew, it uh, means Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, See now, <laughs> the Holy One has restrained from me from bearing. Please go into my handmaiden. It may be that I will obtain children by her. And this is Genesis 16, uh, verses 1 through 3. Now think back carefully. Had the Lord said anything about Hagar in any of the, the God encounters about which we, we've read thus far? No, he, he had not. This plan that Sarah cooked up was not, uh, do you remember that Hebrew word? Not Shema, not listening. Uh, and means much more than just listening. Uh, it was not a, 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 a res not a listening response to the Word of God. This was not a, a God idea. It was a, a Sarah idea. It was uh, sort of like the it is it is good for food, ple pleasant to the eye, and desirable to make one wise. The idea Eve came up with in Genesis three chapter uh, chapter three verse six. And the come, let us build a city and a tower idea that uh, residents of the Shinar Valley voiced in Genesis 11, verse 4. It makes one wonder if uh, perhaps there was a, a serpent loose in Sarah's tent, or if perhaps one of uh, Nimrod's arrows was lodged in her heart. Sarah's idea 
was the epitome of what in Hebrew would be called kol. So I'm giving you another Hebrew word here, kol. And it means a, a matter of a faulty human reasoning birth from uh, human emotions aided and abetted by short-sighted human logic. And so um, when you come across uh, the word holy and unholy together um, in your Old Testament, there, that's uh, coals unholy. That's what it means. It's, it's uh, short-sightedness. It's human logic, emotions, um, instead of God's thoughts and emo uh, uh, ideas. Um, so this, it's the exact opposite of things which are, uh, in the other Hebrew word is kadosh. Uh, that means holy, it's set apart, touched by, and marked by an association with uh, God. And uh, in, in here, as we, we follow Sarah's coal logic, um, a component of the responsibility of, of a, a covenant partner of the Lord is to make a distinction between uh, and, to, and to separate between things that, that are coal and kadosh, or holy and unholy, things that are of the world and things that are of God. And we'll talk about that more later. But I'll stop there today and hope you have a great day and hope to see you Sunday as we come together to worship either, either here on the internet or at the church. Blessings. Bye now.